summer is a time of metamorphosis. Or at least that's what I've always thought has been implied by that classic question, what did you do on your summer vacation? The answer, as some of you may realize and remember, if you've ever had to try to answer that in writing, let's say for a school essay, is often very hard to quantify. Change sneaks up on you. Metamorphosis sneaks up on you. You can tell that something is different. You've grown, you've become more. But often it's hard to tell exactly what's happened, especially in a short period of time, like one summer. What about multiple summers? What about a third of a lifetime of summers? Well, that's a span of time that's easier for me. Thinking back to the summer of 2010, what I did over my summer vacation changed the rest of my life. That was the first summer that I ended up going to Bali, Indonesia to study the music of the gamelan ensemble, of which I have just one instrument to share with you today. The people I met there, the culture that I encountered, the art that I encountered, kept me coming back. In fact, six times since then, and also, again, I hope, this summer. It was where I ended up, in fact, last summer. So if you ask me, what did I do summer vacation 2018? Well, you'd say, professors have summer vacations? Um, they spend them, evidently, ending up again in Indonesia, in the city of Solo, at the colonial Fort Vastenberg, where I joined with a number of colleagues, musicians, artists, some professionals, some not, from across America and across Bali to perform in an international gamelan festival that lasted a week. By now, you're probably thinking, okay, what is this gamelan stuff? Let me uh, get a sense of what it is. So I'll share with you a little bit of the video of one of our rehearsals on stage. <laughs> Thank you. You saw me sitting, sneaking out there in the back. Uh, big glasses, big hair, and nice batik. Um, I ended up there, well, I could trace it back a little bit further, but one of the points of change, I really think, was a class that I happened to sign up for in college. My arts credit requirement, students in here are familiar with this, where I happened to take a world music survey course. Now, I'd been a musician before, I'd encountered a number of different types of music, but this fascinated me. It was the first time I'd really studied music from Africa, music from Indonesia, music from the Middle East, music from around the world. I changed my major, well, it was the second time I changed my major, but this time I went from anthropology to music. And in graduate school, I ended up in ethnomusicology, which is a happy medium in between. It was there at Florida State University that I first began to study the music and performing arts of Bali. The gamelan, a type of percussion orchestra from Indonesia, primarily Bali and Java. And I learned about how in Bali it is central to both the Hindu religious and civic life. And of course, traveling there, I understood something that could not be communicated on a page, which is how much gamelan and its ideology both permeated culture. You could hear it in every street at night, over the rice paddies, across the way, frogs and gamelan, but also the way that the values of the people there were encoded in the music. I began to study these instruments, and I also began to study a little bit of Balinese traditional dance. Its sinuous movements captivating me as I turned from a clumsy, 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 bookish teenager to maybe a slightly less clumsy 20-something. <laughs> I had no idea yet how much I was hooked, 
But hooked I was, and hooked I have been every year since, as I have traveled to Bali and across North America, out to Colorado and up to New York, and out to Vancouver and out to Java and all across Southeast Asia to study this music, to research the lives of its performers, which have resulted in articles and now a book. And I became a performer. Gosh, who knew? When I was small, I didn't think I was very good at being on stage at all. Gamelan had brought me so many places, and is eventually part of what brought me here to Wake Forest University, where in addition to teaching courses in world music, similar to the one that I took so many years ago now, I also lead Gamelan Girimurti, Gamelan of the Ch Enchanted Forest, which is Wake Forest University's own Balinese Gamelan group, open to students as a class and community members, well, just for fun. And not a performer indeed. We're actually performing four times a semester, including next month, so come see us again. Uh, <laughs> it's been quite a journey. What have I learned from this? Or rather, what am I learning from this? These summers, these years of spending time with this music. I happen to think that being a musician and now more recently a dancer has come to shape the way that I view the world in many respects. But considering the discourse of our own community at Wake Forest, I think it's given me some particular insights into the ways that I view community itself and also leadership. What do these words mean? Well, as an anthropologist, we spend a lot of time getting into the nitty gritty of defining words. So I've heard many, many definitions of community. But I like to think about community as a group of people working together to achieve a common cause. Well, then what's a leader? You might think that the leader is the person who's standing in front, the person who looks to be in authority. Maybe they have a special suit. And an orchestra, for example, the person waving a baton. But the leader is not always as obvious as one might think. A leader, I believe, is someone who works in service of that community. And that can take on many different manifestations. That's what I'm going to speak to you about today. And I'm going to use this instrument and these experiences as examples to show you a little bit about what I mean. So learning to play gamelan, well, you saw a little bit of it. There are a number of different instruments, all of which have different roles, from the great gongs in the back of the ensemble. You saw some keyed instruments, like this one, and some ones that are larger. This, the gongsa, flutes, drums, all having distinct parts. I'm going to take off my shoes, which is traditional to show respect to the spirits of the instruments, before I demonstrate a little bit. Larger instruments, like Chalung and Jagogan, often play core melody parts. Think, imagine this, but a little bit bigger. It might sound like this. Instruments like this gangsa serve to elaborate these parts. But what's interesting about these instruments is that actually having one here by itself is very unusual. They often play in pairs. And so you can imagine two musicians playing together. One might elaborate that core melody that I just played from a dance piece called Chandrawasi, like this. And then the partner would play this. Two parts, two instruments, both working together with the core instruments, with all the other instruments of the ensemble. Now, those are complementary, but sometimes they're, in fact, literally interlocking. So, for example, something shorter, perhaps easier to see, one instrument might play this. And its neighbor. Together, those sound like this. Much more than each half alone. Well, what happens, though, 
if in our modern culture of maybe RSVPs on Facebook, your partner decides to ghost you, well, then you might be left alone with... It's incomplete. The elaboration's incomplete, the piece is incomplete, and you're left alone. In an ensemble, when you're working together for a common cause of creating music, or a community with any other common cause, perhaps the most important thing for a leader to do is to realize that every part, no matter how small, is important. A leader consistently shows up. A leader shows up and plays their part. Well, this summer, I had shown up in Bali to begin rehearsals for this performance of the festival. And interestingly about learning to teach gamelan, well, to play it as well, but especially when you become an instructor or the leader of a group, you don't only learn how to play one instrument. You have to learn how to play all of the instruments, from the gongs to the gongsas, all the way up to the kendang drums, which in many cases are the musical leader, providing cues for the others. So when I arrived in um, my village that I travel to frequently, my teacher, Imadi Lasmoan, um, I didn't know which role I was going to play. Sometimes, in music making, as in many other things, one is a teacher. My situation at Wake Forest. But to be a teacher, you also have to be a student. Sometimes you're a leader, and sometimes you're a follower. And there I knew I would be following to some extent, but I must say that my ego, which had been hoping for something very fast and very hard, something to cut my teeth on, something like this part, my ego is a little bit, well, bruised to say, oh, you'll be playing Chalong and Jagogan, the core melody. He said, I want you to be able to play and not have to stress. And I said, ah, oh, Pakmade, you know me very well. Um, you know how much I can stress. So he said, okay, I'll show up and play my part. But as you saw, these are not the fastest or most glamorous of parts. They do have their own challenges, however, especially when one's trying to memorize a whole 30 minutes of new music in less than a week. This abstract melody somehow has to enter into your head. And like the leader of the ensemble, you actually have to know where you are in the piece of music at all times. You have to know what every other instrument is doing at all times and weave your part in with it on its own. And so I did, I showed up, I learned my part, I enjoyed it, I felt pleased with my success in grasping this music. But I didn't feel like I'd you know, done anything particularly special, I'm just playing my part, just following. To my surprise then, it was pretty amazing when one of the other teachers who was there as uh, not the primary leader, but someone who has taught extensively in Bali and in Java, and came up to me after one rehearsal, one right near the end, and he said to me, oh, you're a good musician. And I said, well, thank you, but I've just been playing this core melody part. You know, what's, what has led you to think that? And he said, ah, well, you follow very well. I said, oh, well, thank you. Do you play kendang, was his next question, the leading drum. And I said, well, I explained a little bit about the group we have here. And he said, oh, well, you should study with me. You look like someone who will be good at it. All of this because of the way I followed. It was a reminder to me of one of the other important principles that I've learned from this community that leadership, becoming a good leader, also means knowing how to follow well, when to take initiative, and when that initiative is, in fact, to follow the person in charge. While our performance came and went, we set up on the stage, we looked out over the audience of over a thousand Indonesians and some people from around the world, many of whom were holding cell phones aloft, trying to capture our performance, we played well. We played very well. 
But it wasn't perfect. And yet, when we got back on the bus to go back to the hotel, we were exuberant. We were so exuberant that when a popular Indonesian song came on the radio, everyone burst into motion. People got up in the aisles and began to dance. Others who knew the lyrics sang along. And some started percussing along, making mouth music to go with this song. Why were we celebrating so much? We were all skilled musicians, most of them so much more than I. We knew we had made mistakes. Well, because we'd taken to heart what our own leaders had set as an example. The type of community that they had built and the emphasis for this performance, which despite being an official government event, despite being on the stage, despite being in front of this audience, was actually not about the notes at all. No, instead it was about creating the community, bridging across the Pacific Ocean to bring together musicians to accomplish this goal, creating friendships, creating partnerships, creating art, creating a good feeling that would last throughout the entire process, from the first day of, perform uh, first day of rehearsal to the performance and beyond, when we went back to our respective homes and different continents, where we continue to speak online for months to come. A good feeling that I hope will last for our lifetimes. What have I learned since 2010, that summer that changed my life? Maybe this is it. Maybe the biggest discovery of all was discovering this community that's been so generous with its time. It's funny, actually, to stand up here by myself with a single instrument, because that would almost never be the case. Not in Bali. But having been a part of this community, having been a leader in it in the ways that I can be, I know that they're actually here with me. And the things that I've learned from them, to show up, to play your part, to lead and to follow, and to know that they're intimately the same thing. And finally, to cultivate a good feeling. These are lessons that are not easy. These are lessons that are not easy to develop or to cultivate. Metamorphosis for humans is not instant, but it's a constant process. Even as a teacher, I try to embody these ideals. I'm still a student learning them. But fortunately, I have my community at my back. It's a difficult struggle to embody these ideals, but I believe that there are ones that are well worth the effort. Thank you.